Good morning and welcome to worship today. I'm Pastor Francis Johnson, Senior Minister at the Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church of Pembroke, Georgia, and the Sweet Magnolia Missionary Baptist Church of Statesboro, Georgia. And today is the seventh Sunday of the Easter season, also known as Pentecost Sunday. I'm grateful to be with you today as we continue to make every home a sanctuary. We look forward to joining again in our physical spaces beginning on the third Sunday in June. But until then, continue to observe all the CDC guidelines, wear a mask wherever you go, only travel for essential business, and let us continue to take care of each other because we are all in, in this together. On this day, I know that the nation is grieving even as I am grieving uh, over the state of affairs. This is not a new state of affairs. This is simply a videoed state of affairs, a captured and broadcast around the world state of affairs, uh, but nothing new for those who, of us who have worked uh, for years to try to uh, make America all that she should be. In this day, in light of the tragedy in Minneapolis and in Louisville, and in Brunswick and all over uh, America. Uh, we know that America is not what she should be. And so protests have erupted all over this country. Uh, and people are lifting their voice. Uh, they are angry, they are upset and they cannot take it anymore. I join in that proclamation that I can't take it anymore. That we cannot continue to live like this. That in fact, we are done dying on this Pentecost Sunday, when in the Christian tradition, God gave the Holy Spirit to men and women that they may become the church, that they may become the living body of Christ in this earth, able to transform this earth with a transmigrative love that could lift people past where they were and where the world sought to keep them to where they ought to be, that we will be remade in the image and likeness and the authority of God uh, to shake off the chains of this world on this Pentecost Sunday. It seems like the fire has really fallen all around us. And may the church in this moment uh, truly take this time to repent, to ask God to make us anew and to breathe fresh on us. Every Sunday morning at our congregations, we open up with this proclamation and we shared with you today. Why don't you say it with me wherever you are, spirit of the living God, breathe fresh on us. Spirit of the living God, breathe fresh on me. Break me, make me, mold me and fill me. Spirit of the living God, breathe fresh on us. Even as we're called to go up into worship today, uh, we look back in Sankofa spirit, that we might gather the wisdom of those who've come before us. And even as we gather that wisdom, that it would be strength for us in our journey right now. Uh, 56 years ago, Fannie Lou Hamer and those of the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party were engaged in a similar struggle for dignity uh, and expression of their grievances to government, where they took their uh, demands to the seat of power uh, and demanded to be heard, their plight uh, should be examined and their, that uh, their lives should be vindicated and justice should be done. I found a rare gem and that is uh, the incomparable Fan Lou Hamer activist uh, singing. And she is lifting precious Lord uh, in songs my mother taught me, African-American legacy recordings. I want to share it with you. It blessed me uh, when I heard it. And I hope that it blesses you on today. We'll join a Fen Lou Hamer singing it. Uh, and she's in the midst of that struggle then 56 years ago. And may it strengthen us in our struggle uh, right now, even as we lift this uh, today. Enjoy. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand, I am tired. 
testimony in the voice of Fannie Lou Hamer, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. Of course, you all know the history of that song written by the Reverend Dorsey, uh, favorite of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., often invited to be sung by Mahalia Jackson. You should know that uh, that uh, this song was sang uh, at the state funeral of Lyndon Baines Johnson. Of course, Aretha Franklin sang it at Mahalia Jackson's funeral and uh, it seems apropos today, uh, adapted from and inspired by that old uh, Isaac Watts Negro hymn, Must Jesus Bear the Cross Alone? You don't have to tell us about bearing crosses for the cross and the lynching tree, uh, as well now as the police knee, uh, have been our cross for a long time. May that song give us inspiration as we move forward on this day. I want to let you know that the church is still the church and we have sought to meet the needs of people who are hurting in the midst of this pandemic. 
And so if you have a need and you are in the Pembroke or Statesboro community, if you have a need from wherever you're watching this broadcast today, we want to be a connector to resources for you. And so you can simply uh, reach out to us on the social media thread that you're watching this. You can contact us at Sweet Magnolia by simply logging on to our website at uh, magnoliabaptistchurch.online. Or if you're in the Pembroke community or watching from anywhere, uh, you can log on at mountmariahchurch.online and we'll be happy uh, to be the church uh, as it relates to your needs. For those of you who know uh, the blessing of supporting a church that supports the community, thank you. You've kept us strong during this time. And I know that it will be your faithfulness that will keep us strong uh, in the years to come. And so if you are supporting Magnolia or Mount Moriah, information is on the screen for how you can continue to do that. If you're supporting Mount Moriah, you can simply text the word blessed to 912-225-6531. That's 912-225-6531. Text the word blessed and uh, easy and secure process to give. And thank you for those who've given from Mount Moriah. If you are worshiping in the Statesboro area and you want to give, you can simply text the word blessed to 912-274-8802. That's 912-274-8802. Eight eight zero two, uh, and continue to support the work uh, of the ministry. Uh, as we prepare to move forward in our worship, I want to let you know that uh, that in the midst of all that is going on, uh, we have uh, sought to be a support uh, to local organizers across Georgia. Of course, you know that uh, I'm a leader within the Just Georgia Coalition, a coalition seeking. Uh, to address criminal justice issues from a legislative uh, and policy standpoint, uh, as well as to hold prosecutors accountable, sheriffs and others who are responsible for the administration of justice. Uh, and still that's not enough. Uh, and so on this evening, uh, all over protests will continue to happen across this country. I urge them to be done in ways that uh, demonstrate our commitment uh, to live as peaceful people, I understand, as Dr. King said so well, uh, that where there are riots, those who uh, deplore riots need to understand that riots uh, express the voice of the unheard. Uh, Dr. King said that it is often taken out of uh, out of context. But I want you to know that that's exactly what King meant when he said that, that riots uh, are the voice of the unheard. Uh, but we endeavor uh, to, to go down to Savannah this afternoon and support uh, organizers there at the request of Mayor Van Johnson. Uh, there we will meet at two o'clock at Johnson Square, two o'clock at Johnson Square and lift our voice and declare we're done dying. We are done dying. And this nation cannot return to business uh, as as usual. Again, if you're in the Savannah area, two o'clock Johnson Square, as we lift our voice and declare this nation uh, cannot return to business as usual. Uh, before we come back with the word of God on this day, I'm grateful for Hezekiah Walker. His testimony in song uh, confirms what we all know that it's got to get better. It's got to get better and you know, who is responsible for making it so we are with our hands, with our voice, with our heart, with our minds, we can build a better world. And so we enjoy this, uh, this great song. It's a song on this Pentecost of our aspirations because we are not there yet. Uh, but if we are to ever get there, it will be because we frame our mind, make our commitments and stand in conviction that Jesus did not bear his cross alone and the rest of us can go free. No, there is a cross for everyone and there is a cross for me. It's going to get better, amen. Come on everybody, put your hands together. It's got to get better. All over the world, listen to these words. People come, people go. Your life has been out of control. You're confused. But don't worry. It's got to get better. It's got to be
Join me in declaring is got to get better, and we intend to make it so. We intend to make it so. Beloveds, join us uh, as we go to the word of God found in Acts chapter 2, and the reading today uh, is an extended reading, and I want to read it uh, all so that we might be encouraged by it. It says in Acts Acts chapter 2, beginning at verse one, continuing through verse 21, that when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place and suddenly from heaven there came the sound like the rush of a violent wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as fire appeared among them and the tongues rested on each of them and all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues and languages as the spirit gave them the ability. And now there were devout Jews of every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem and 
the sound of the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each other. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, the Medes, the Amalites, the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontius, and Asia, Pergia, Philia, Egypt, and parts of Libya, and Serene, and the visitors of both Jews and proselytes, Christians and Arabs, in their own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying one to another, what does this mean? But the others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. Peter standing with the 11 raised his voice and addressed them men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem. Let this be known unto you and listen to what I say. Indeed, we are not drunk. These are not drunk as you suppose for it is too early in the morning for us to be drunk. Nine o'clock in the morning. Now no, this is what was spoken of by the prophet Joel. And in the last days, God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh that your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams, and even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit and those who prophesy, and I will show portents in heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist, and the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. And then everyone, who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I want to just lift for the moments that I have remaining with you today. And I don't think it's by accident that you have landed on this social media stream. Hear me well, that between us and despair, the fire fell. Between us and despair, the fire fell. This phrase between us and despair is not mine. It is borrowed again in the Sankofa spirit from uh, those who fought apartheid in South Africa. It was the rally call of uh, the precursor to the African National Congress. And they understood beginning in 1910 at its formation until the 1960s when it was banned by the South African apartheid government that in order for them to not lose hope in all that they knew was theirs as a birthright, to not lose hope in all that was theirs as creations of God, the dignity and worth of their human personality, the ability to live and control their own communities, to be able to set a course for their own happiness, despite the desire of others to oppress, control, marginalize, and take from them. But in order to never lose that hope that they had to know that what that there was stood something between them and that kind of hopelessness, that kind of utter resignation that nothing can change, that kind of thing that they called despair. And, and that thing that they knew that stood between them and that place that none of us want to go to, that none of us want to believe is ours forever, that place of despair, they understood that heaven was the only thing standing between them. That, that, that heaven, not some, some cloudy mystical place where cherubims float above in a celestial ream of, of no worries or concerns or cares, but the heavens, the heavens, all of the collective worth of the ancestors work that had come before them all of the collective grace and mercy and courage and conviction that had been leveled towards their liberation all led them to believe that there was above them a great cloud of witnesses who were yet speaking to them in that moment, don't turn to despair, hold on to your hope. So in this moment where we try to find some light I don't have to look 
anywhere beyond the struggles of our people as they have fought those struggles in other times to find the hope that I need in this moment. For between me uh, and despair, and I hope between you and despair, you know that heaven uh, has the given answer. And that answer in the day of Pentecost and that answer even in this day is that the fire will fall, that the fire is falling right now. If I can push it this morning, I want to do that by letting you know three things that I see in the midst of the text. I see in the midst of the text that there is a connection and that connection leads those who are assembled together and on one accord to have courage. And that courage ultimately leads them to leave that place where they have assembled and go out into a frightening world that is still as deadly as ever as it comes to the lives of, uh, of Hebrew people in this time, as it comes to the lives of black people in this time, as it comes to the lives of transgender people in this time, as it comes to the lives of uh, other able people in this time, as it comes to the lives of uh, non-documented Americans in this time, as it comes to the lives of those around the world who don't have the privileges, even the privileges that those of us who are oppressed in America take for granted. That, that in the midst of this, they went out into a world that was just as dangerous, but they went out with a conviction and that conviction said to them that they would have their freedom in their spirit and in their body. And they, we would oppose any stale order, any stale status quo, that sought to shackle them where they were. So on this day, as we dig a little deeper, we see this connection. It says that on the day when Pentecost had come, that they were together on one, one accord in one place. And then there was a sound. Sound is only produced when, when, when air is expressed. And it is expressed over, uh, over vocal cords, uh, over, over the ability to make noise, but if there's no air, there can be no sound. And so in this day where we are seeking to find the light in the midst of the text, I want you to know you cannot hear the word of God. You cannot hear the Pentecost rushing of a mighty wind, and you cannot receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and all that would be possessed of the Holy Spirit if you can't breathe. If you can't hear the cries of those who are declaring that they cannot breathe. So on this day, let us find connection with, with George Floyd. Let us find connection with uh, Ahmaud Arbery. Let us find connection with Yuri Martin. Let us find connection with Anthony Hill. Let us find connection with Tamir Rice and Sandra Bland. Let us find connection with Eric Gardner. Let us find connection oh, with Michael Brown. Let us find connection with Trayvon Martin. Let us find connection with all of those present and those in our past who hung from trees, who all were gasping for air at the end of some oppressive system that sought to disconnect them from their, their humanity in the midst of this Pentecost expression. What I see and what I want you to see today is that there was a connection with the people who were within that place. They were all oppressed. They were all marginalized but they were all standing on the promise that there will be an answer from heaven. And it is that connection that binds us up together. If you feel discouraged, if you feel tired, if you feel weary in your well-doing, if you feel like you've gone to vote and it seemed like your vote did not matter because some system or suppress that vote and try to marginalize your access to the ballot. If you if you feel like you've voted for politicians before and they've let you down, if you feel like you have prayed to your knees are worn out and the church has no real answer to the problems that face us, then guess what? You find yourself in good company today because I'm right here with you. But yet in the midst of that connection, I hope that we will listen to heaven for the fire will fall. For between us and despair, let us hear what heaven has to say. Go further in the midst of this text, we see that when the fire did fall, it brought about courage 
that enabled them to face the threats and even the possibility of death. And for many of them, martyrdom would come. That there would come a point in time when they had to match their words with their deeds. And let me tell you something to the body of Christ. This is the hour when the church must match its words with its deeds. It's no longer enough to say that you love. It's no longer enough that you say you believe in equality and equity. It's no longer enough to say that you believe in the kingdom of God. If you're not willing to bring it to pass here, keep your words for they're too cheap. They're too cheap for this Pentecost moment because Pentecost gave those who were assembled the courage to enable them to go out from where they were. This pandemic has put us out of our church buildings. But wherever you are today, before you contemplate going back into any church space that's been consecrated and dedicated to the work of building a kingdom, make sure wherever you are, in your home, on your job, wherever you are, around the boardrooms or in the courtrooms where you occupy in your classrooms, regardless of where you are, that you make sure that you don't talk about having the Holy Ghost if you don't have the courage to go out and face the world and all that the world can bring to those who speak with courage the word of the Lord. Because this courage that I'm speaking of comes from God, the same God that spoke to Moses to tell Pharaoh, let my people go. This courage is the same courage that comes from God that answered Hannah. Hannah declared, for it's not by might that we will prevail. This is the same courage, the same courage that, that, spoke, that spoke from God to Isaiah when Isaiah declared that the tyrants shall be no more. This is the same courage that answered Amos in his despair when he said, no, 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 it will not always be this day, be this way. I see a day when justice will roll down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. This is the same courage that spoke to Jesus Christ. Jesus stood up in the midst, those who thought they knew him and said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me not just to sing and pray and preach. We've heard too many songs, too many prayers, and too many sermons that are not moved by courage to the place that they cause us to do something. So in the midst of doing something, Jesus said this, 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 this courage, called me to tell you that I am anointed to bring the good news to the poor. I, I am anointed to proclaim the release of the captives. I am anointed to proclaim the recovery of sight to the blind, to tell those who are oppressed, go free, and to let the world know that this is the acceptable year of the Lord's favor. This is that courage and that courage that, that those who were in that upper space, upper room, upper chamber, they, they, they found that day by aid of the Holy Spirit led them to a conviction that they were going forward and that they were not turning around. Here it is, here it is, here it is that, that Peter stands up in the midst. One who just, just a few weeks ago claimed he didn't know Jesus at all, but one who has now had an answer from heaven and in between where he was and, and where he felt God leading him, heaven answered him and gave him a conviction that he would not turn loose. He says that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What an extraordinary word from someone who was so steeped in the Hebrew understanding that God had favored them, that they were chosen, that Peter now throws his arms open and declares to the world, if you hear anything about Pentecost, hear Peter's expression that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord, I want those who have said that, that God's favor is upon the white man and not the black man. I want you to hear Peter declaring, this is the Pentecost truth today, that whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord, I want those who stand in pulpits 
with bigoted expressions towards lesbians and gays and those who are transgender and those who find their sexual expression not as, as the normative would find it. I want you to hear Peter say, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I want the undocumented to hear from those who claim that the rights and privileges of being a human being and having a right to seek happiness only belongs to those who are born uh, 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 on this side uh, of an artificial geographic line. I want you to hear what Peter says about Pentecost, that whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, shall be saved. So on this day, when so many people have so much to say about what God should be doing and what the church is not doing, I want to go back to this formative period in the church's history when the fire did fall, when heaven gave an answer between their despair and and and, and where, where, where they were going as a people, as a church, as a community of believers, heaven did answer. And heaven answered by fire. I watched as cities burned. I watched as protesters peacefully lifted their voice and others chose to use the tactic of riots. But let me let you know that these are not the first riots and the first looting that have taught those in this moment who use violence how to get what they want in America. From the very first moments of this country's conception as exemplified by the Boston Tea Party, the American way is that if you don't like what's going on to loot and to riot, we call those folks who did that in Boston Harbor patriots. And I want you to hear me well when I say that they chose the tactic because they had come to the place where they realized that Britain was never going to lift their boot off their neck and they had to secure their liberty by any means necessary. If you don't like Malcolm X, if he's too radical, then listen to the words of the radicals in the Declaration of Independence. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for people to dissolve the bands that have formerly connected them. If you don't, you don't like the words of the Declaration of Independence, if that's too radical, then hear the words of Peter in the midst of this Pentecostal expression. Whosoever George Floyd had a right to be saved. Maude Aubrey had a right to be saved. And all of those nameless people who will not get the attention that their case has gotten in recent days, who swung from trees and were thrown in rivers and buried in shallow graves, that they had a right to be saved as well. So on this Pentecost day, let us hear from heaven. And my prayer is that God would answer with a fire, a fire that might bring you into connection with the marginalized of this world because that's where Jesus walks. That God's fire would fall and bring you more courage to do the things you know you ought to live out the, the calling that God has put on your life. That the fire would fall in such a way that it would lead you to a conviction to say, I ain't going back. I won't turn back forward together, not one step back to say, to say, like the Ibu who landed there in Darien, Georgia, St. Simon's Sound, that before I'll be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to be with the Lord and be free. My brothers and sisters, I'm so grateful that you were able to spend a little bit of your Pentecost Sunday with me today. We've been reading and enjoying from Acts chapter two, verses one through 21. And when the day of Pentecost had come between us and despair, the fire did fall. My brothers and sisters, we prepare to wrap up today. I want you to know that we are always praying for you and believing God for you. Later on this evening at three o'clock, I will go live for a special broadcast from Jess Georgia. Jess Georgia is hosting a, a day of uh of retooling for our mind, bodies, and souls. We will talk with faith leaders from every perspective, Christian, Muslim, 
our traditional African faiths. We'll be inspired uh, to know what tools we can use to make ourselves ready in this moment from a position of faith. All week long, we'll have actions. I'll also join you live uh, as well from the protest in Savannah, Georgia, from Johnson Square periodically throughout the afternoon. Pray for me even as I am praying for you. God bless you and have a great Sunday.